Hi everybody, this is Brian at 3dmetaltools.com. Um, I recently put together this uh, Metal Earth um, Iconics Imperial Star Destroyer, and I like it a lot. Uh, I, I thought that what I would do here is put together a video that would give you um, some things that I like about it, some things that where the design I thought was lacking, um, where the design was great, and then also uh, some tips. So if I were doing this all over again, here's, you know, I'm going to point out the spots that I would be on the lookout for, um, and hopefully this type of information will help you on your own build. Okay, first of all, I love this model. It really is nice. I love the Metal Earth Iconics line. It's really quite big. Um, I don't know if this if this helps or not, but here's a ruler, a six inch ruler next to it. So it's a sizable model with a lot of detail. And I grew up on Star Wars, and so uh, I'm a nut for any Star Wars model, really. But this one especially, I think, is one of the best that has been offered uh, as far as Metal Earth or any other brand putting together some Star Wars models. The rear end really looks excellent too. Uh, these are the only pieces where you'll see any color. There's some blue pieces uh, back there. Um, overall, I really do like it. It's a great model and I would recommend anyone who has been looking at this to go ahead and do it. With a few caveats, there are some things that I that I found um, to be challenging and a couple of design flaws. Uh, uh, let me get into it. Okay, so one thing that I found to be a challenge with this model um, is the these huge pieces which makes up the top of the ship and the hull. Interestingly, they are all one piece. Um, let me take a look. I'll show you. I'll set this down and I'll show you in the instructions um, which these pieces are. Um, so it's number 73, this huge piece here, and it looks like it's 43 here. These, <laughs> incidentally, I think that these are at least, you know, with the models that I've built, I think these are the, probably the, the two single largest individual pieces I've ever seen in a model. I'm sure there's some exception out there, but not one that I've built yet, which I think is just kind of interesting. But what was challenging about these is that you need to create this fold, you know, so this fold that creates this angle and the fold that creates this angle, it's a long fold and there is no clearly defined angle that it needs to be. Normally, with these models, you end up with, if you're going to make a fold that is not 90 degrees or that is a, an angle outside of the norm, I guess, you're always going to have a mating piece that will show you exactly what that angle is. So you can look forward in the instructions, you can find the piece that this bend is supposed to uh, connect to, and you can see exactly what the bend is or what, what the angle of the fold is. However, this back here is the piece that this mates with. And guess what? It's also folded in two directions. So the challenge here is there is no way to really define exactly what the angle of this fold on the top of the ship and the hull is supposed to be. So it's not a tremendous deal. But in the end, I realized that my folds were probably a little bit too steep. And then when I went to do the final assembly, I had to do a little bit of improvising to get this back to a less, um, a less uh, tight angle so that I could fit everything together. So just be careful. Um, do your best. Maybe it would be best to look at some online photos or have a look at what I've done here to figure out what that angle approximately should be. Discuss these, I guess I would call them domes. These little dome pieces that are on the bridge of this ship. Um, first of all, they were kind of difficult to form. Uh, they do give you a spare. So there's actually three of these 
in the kit and you only need two so if you mess one up you've got a spare but uh, be careful in forming them getting them to be exactly what they should be and the shape that they need to be I found to not be very easy uh, to do that and also keep them seamless you know I think you can see some imperfections in here and I found it to be a little bit challenging to get that uh, these to be the exact shape now the next thing and and this is step seven um, step seven eight and nine and now the next thing that I found to be challenging about this as well is that when you get to when you get to step 10 which is right here you can see that once you mount the bridge to this piece down here you have this locked in and you can no longer access the tabs that connect these little domey things on here so if you look closely you'll see that mine wiggle unfortunately okay um, after you have built this and after the bridge has been attached I would highly recommend now when I attached them they were solid but then as I go through and I'm building the rest of the model of course my hands bump into this or my hands touch the dome or whatever and over time they loosened up and the only way to fix that really is to either add a dab of glue down in here which I will consider uh, doing or to uh, disassemble it and I don't want to disassemble I feel that you know I'm gonna display this obviously we don't <laughs> we don't play with model earth or with, with metal earth or with these 3d metal models so it's not going to get handled it's going to be on display and when the when the model sits they both sit in the position that they should so I'm just gonna leave that alone personally I'm gonna leave that exactly the way it is and not a big deal for me okay next let's have a look at how the bridge here connects to this piece right here behind it um, I believe this may be a design flaw um, if you can see that connection there's a gap and it's actually slightly bent if you look in step 10 uh, here step 10 the piece in question this piece right here that is bent that fold it looks to me like there should be an angle cut into this because the bridge has this angle to it this fold to it but the mating piece doesn't have an angle to it so this piece right here it appears to me that they should have made kind of like a V notch right there okay um, what I had to do to get this to work and maybe you can see this um, sorry maybe you can see this but I had to bend this piece down so that it would actually fit there I would either have to bend it down or bend it up I decided to bend it down but why wouldn't they just simply cut kind of like a V shape into that to make it fit better so I don't know if I approach this wrong or if I'm not reading the instructions correctly but it looks to me like that may be a design flaw all right next I'd like to look at step 26 which has to do with this piece that is on the bottom of the ship unless I'm mistaken that's probably where the rebel ship was sucked up into at the beginning of a new hope um, but uh, let me show you what I'm unsure about this and where I think it may be a design flaw this is the piece right here so you can see that you fold this into a square you bring this bottom piece underneath it and by the way pay special attention to this right here because you want the engraved side to be up it seems a little counterintuitive uh, but make sure if you look ahead you realize that this is what's going to show um, the bottom of this will not show that'll be inside the model it'll be the inside of this it'll I'm sorry it'll be the inside of this that will show not the bottom so make sure that you have the engraved side up when you do this fold but my gripe with this is that here I think you can see that on the bottom it is shaped with the you know approximate profile of the hull but then the top here is straight 
um, I believe that it would have been a lot better if they would have made this piece up here with the same profile as the hull. By not doing it this way, I think you can see that there's a really significant gap down in here, right there. So, you know, I'm not sure if that's a design flaw or not. I guess that I wish, at first I thought, geez, did I put this piece in upside down? Did I do it wrong? But, I mean, I don't believe that I did. And from what I can tell, it looks like there's a gap there, and there's a gap there. And it seems like the solution would have been really simple just to simply shape this piece with the same profile as the hull. Next, let's have a look at step 28, 29, 30, and 31. And the only reason for this is just because I found this to probably be the most challenging portion. And what these are is creating all these thrusters on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different thrusters. And each of them, each of them has, geez, the the large thrusters have one, two, three, four, five, six components going together, and then the smaller thrusters each have one, two, three, four, four or five components coming together. So they are a little bit complex. Um, uh, cone forms I found were to be very, very helpful. So these are my cone forms that I use, and this was extremely helpful. I also found that round nose pliers like this, first of all, these are great pliers to own, but you'll also notice because the noses of these, well, the nose is round, round nose pliers, um, the jaws of these are round cylinders that are tapered. These cylinders were very, very helpful in making the really tight angled um, or the, the, the tighter radius thrusters on the back there. Okay, moving on towards the end of this build. Parts number 103, they both go on either side of the rear of this ship. So this is part 103, and that's part 103. Maybe I didn't get the angle of the hull to be just right, and you can see that I do have a gap here. So maybe I didn't get this exactly where it should be, but I don't know that I want to mess around with it anymore. I really can't get to a point where I can change this angle now that it's assembled. But I found it very difficult to get these tabs through the top of the ship and these tabs through the bottom of the ship to um, get those folded and in place. They just didn't seem to be the, the, the part didn't seem to be the right shape or maybe I didn't do the correct bend to really get these to mate well. So use some extra care on part 103 here and part 103 there. Okay, the very last thing that I'd like to point out about this where I think I would, if I were doing this model again, I would use some care and I would pay special attention is the nose up here. You can see, I hope you can see that there's a tab here, a tab here, but there's no tabs out here at the tip to really clamp the nose down. So I think maybe you can see that it looks as if the nose of my ship tapers from this tab onward. So from here to here, it seems like it's kind of opening up. And there's not much that I can do about this because there's no tabs there to grab a hold of it. So I really wish they would have put a tab here and another one on the other side, you know, on both the top and the bottom so that I could lock this down. That to me looks better and as if that would have been a better design. But, you know, not a huge deal. I think that's a pretty minor, minor uh, gripe if uh, they could have had that to just secure this piece a little bit better. Okay, so that's this model. Overall, I love it. Um, as I said earlier, I'm a nut for anything Star Wars, and especially a larger ship like this, I think is pretty exciting. And I think they did a really good job. A few minor items where I think that maybe the design could have been improved, but um, overall, 
uh, I would definitely buy this again and I recommend that you uh, give it a shot also. Um, I hope that this video is helpful. Uh, leave, leave me a note in the comments and let me know what you think and hopefully some of my observations here will help you on your build. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. This is Brian at 3dmetaltools.com. Have a good one.